Okay, so I've been having a look at the Berry Boot website and I've been looking at the testing images for Raspberry Pi 4, which always interests me because it gives you something new to play around with. And uh, I saw that two new things. Uh, so Twister OS, I'm not going to cover in this video, but I have done it uh, on an SSD and it's just great to see it on Berry Boot. Um, so I'm not going to do another video because it will be the same sort of performance as the other one. But uh, Kali Linux, I haven't tried this newer version uh, and so I've downloaded it and I've put it onto a USB stick, so it's in my downloads folder. You can see I'm downloading Twister OS now. So you just literally drop that onto a USB stick and uh, then pop it in your Pi running Berry Boot. Now at the moment this doesn't work for the 8 gig Pi because Berry Boot isn't supported for some reason. I'm looking into it and others are trying out things and if I find out why uh, or how to change it, I'll let you know. So let's go over to the Pi. Okay, so I've got my Berry Boot SD card in the Pi. I've got my USB stick, which has got the Kali Linux download on it. And I've got my SSD, which is what Berry Boot is gonna run from. So let's boot that up. Okay, so this is the screen that you're met with when you press the edit menu button. And uh, if you wanna add an OS from the USB stick, press and hold add OS with the left mouse button and then copy OS from USB stick. And there you see it finds your image. So this is Kali Linux. Click on that, hit open, and that's gonna copy that over to the SSD as an operating system. Okay, so you can see that's copied over now. If I click on it and hit set default, and now if I click exit, what it's gonna do now is it's gonna boot from the SSD drive. Okay, so that's booting up now. Uh, if I don't press anything, it will just automatically boot into that, or I could press return to let it boot quicker, but I'll leave it. Okay, so this is the login screen. To log in, you just put in Kali and Kali. Hit return. Took me a while to find that password. Uh, I've already got this web page out because I've been looking around at it. Um, but uh, so what it says is the industry's most advanced penetration testing distribution. Uh, and this is more for security professionals. And you'll see what I mean by that, because if you click on the main bar here, uh, as you scroll down, so we've got the usual things, favorites, recently used, all applications, settings. So all of that comes up as normal. But then underneath, these are all to do with security, information gathering, vulnerability analysis, web application analysis, database assessment, password attacks, wireless attacks, reverse engineering, exploitation tools, sniffing and spoofing, and uh, post-exploitation. So there's all sorts of things in there that I know nothing about, but uh, if you're a security professional or you're into that side of it, then they'll be very useful for you. I would more, for me, I would go into all applications and just have a look and see. So what have we got about XFCE, accessibility, advanced network configuration, appearance, application finder, we've got a PDF launcher, we've got our Bluetooth settings, uh, Catfish file search, clipboard manager, uh, color profiles, desktop display, there's an archive manager there, there's our file manager, I think there's two file managers on this, uh, file manager settings, Firefox is the web browser that it uses, uh, I don't know what Cali Bugs is, bug tracker, there's all sorts of documentation, um, forums, tools and uh, training for, for using Kali Linux. Uh, and there's this undercover mode, which is really interesting. Uh, I covered this in another video. If I press undercover mode, you'll see what happens. The screen flashes briefly, and then it all changes. And if I click on this bottom Windows symbol, you can see that it's mimicking Windows 10. So if I was to minimize that, there you go, you get the Windows logo. Everything down here looks very Windows. Because I'm used to, from other videos, running Windows 10 on the Pi, um, but obviously this runs better because it's running uh, the full amount of RAM and it's, uh, it's, it's running Linux, so it's much, much lighter as an operating system. If I go to folders down here, you can see an open folders, even down to the file manager, everything looks very much like Windows. And I actually, because I'm more used to this system, I actually find it a bit easier looking through the apps and things. But this is more about Kali Linux, so, if you wanted to find out how to get in and out of that mode, all you would do is go to the Windows bar and just type in UND, you get undercover mode, you click on that and it switches back. So this is switching back to Kali Linux 
Uh, and I've got another video which explains this and the reasoning for this. So I'll link that in the description uh, that I did this a while ago. Um, but let's go back up and all applications, uh, file manager. You can see loads of things in here. Uh, all of these are, are to do with security and things like that. And I, I know nothing about them, but they've obviously got particular names that people will know straight away. But there's loads of it installed on there. So let's have a look at performance. You can see there's not a lot of apps apart from security related, but I guess if you're into Kali Linux, you're you're going to be a more advanced user anyway, so you're going to want to tailor it to exactly how you want, but you'll like the fact that all these security related things are built in. If we just go into settings, uh, I was trying to find out, and maybe someone can answer this, I think this is a 32-bit operating system, but I, I couldn't find out from any of the menus or the settings or looking for an about setting. Uh, I did find uh, so on the web browser, if I go up here, uh, so I launch Firefox, let's go full screen this time. Uh, on this second page, I found a, this, this tells you about Kali Linux on the Raspberry Pi 4, uh, but uh, down at the bottom it said somewhere about it being a 32-bit, yeah, 32-bit. Currently we only have a 32-bit support, but expect 64. So I don't know if this is the 32 or the 64-bit, but I couldn't see a way of easily finding out and I like to do this where I just have a brief look at the operating system so let's open up some web pages so let's go for hot UK deals let's go for BBC news let's go for eBay let's get a few up and running so now everything's loaded up let's see how it scrolls yeah, it's not, not the smoothest of all the systems, but it's reasonable. Uh, so if I click on something, there you go. Yeah, it does feel pretty snappy. Again, I'm well, I'm overclocked at 2147, and I'm running from an SSD, which is obviously uh, a nice combination. So everything launches and goes to very quickly. Let's close down some of these and just go with YouTube and see what the performance is like on that. Something with a bit of movement in it. I guess that will probably give us some movement. We saved $85 by literally clicking twice so, and installing a free browser add-on. Okay, so I've muted it so you can hear what I'm saying. Skip ads. So what we're looking at now, so HD. So it's on 1080, so let's have a look and see if we can see any obvious tearing. It looks pretty crisp, looks pretty decent. If I go full screen. Yeah, a bit of tearing there, it's a bit, a bit juddery. But not bad for the Pi 4. Uh, the Pi 4 usually suffers a little bit from video. There are various fixes, but I don't know of any of the fixes to apply on this. So if I pause that, uh, and move up and down here. Yeah, the web browser is not the not the best performance to be honest. Because considering I'm running from an SSD uh, and I'm overclocked, I would have expected that to be handled a bit better. I guess this operating system is all about security, and and again, you'll know enough to tweak and get into it and play around with it and and use what's best for you. So minimize all windows and show the desktop, so we can go back and forth. So let's open some things up and see what happens when we do that. So text editor, file manager, terminal. So let's click on that. And there's a screen recorder as well. I haven't really tried that, but it looks like it takes a screenshot or does video as well. So let's go back. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way of it showing the windows like on, uh, like on a Mac and I think Windows as well does the same where it separates them all so you can see where you are. There might be a way of it doing that, um, but obviously we can we can click through, and you can see that it that it works nice and fast. Okay, so that's Kali Linux. Uh, if you like it and uh, it looks like it's the operating system is going to work for you, head on over to that Barry Boot link. I'll put it in the description. But uh, I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.